Hello everyone, in this workflow video, I would like to show you how the Pixar implementation in AVO actually works. Some of you may have already worked with AVO, some of you may have not. Um, to give everyone a brief introduction what AVO is, let me quickly open my web browser here. Uh, you can find some information about AVO, of course, on our homepage if you go to Pixera. And then here in accessories, you can find the AVO system. You can find some information on AVO. It's basically a media control software, a full-blown media control software. Uh, it's node-based. You can put logic in here, scripts. You can uh, control devices, projectors, for example. There is media implementation and all that kind of stuff and even social media integration. And uh, you can also build your own um, web interfaces in order to control stuff. And uh, it can uh, you, you can get it as an additional license uh, for your Pixero version. There is a free license, uh, but if you want to actually use some of the more advanced uh, features, you have to get a license. Uh, you can actually, on our Pixero Facebook group, which I would definitely uh, suggest to join, uh, you can find in data the AVO workshop as PDF. So that's basically this so it's the full workshop uh, you can have a look at everything see what you can actually do here you see an overview of all the additional license which you can actually activate or deactivate and here's also a short overview uh, and as you can see the free license uh, so this is what you can actually uh, use right away um, there are no functional groups available though so no um, not really any custom scripts or drivers to use um, as you can see, so these are, would all be functions you can actually activate through these um, functional groups like Radar Touch, uh, Artnet, uh, AVO Calendar for scheduling, and so on. Um, and if you want to try it out in our download section, uh, you can actually download uh, AVO. So if we go to software, um, ba -ba -ba, you should be able to find AVO right here. So just go to Pixera, click on Pixera in the download section. If you scroll down, you can actually find AVO. Okay, so now what com components do you actually need? Of course, you will need Pixera. Then you want to install AVO. And for AVO, there are now two different software, uh, softwares you want to run. The first is the so-called AVO manager. That's the node-based programming manager. And you also want to run the so-called AVO service. And this will be a Windows service which runs just in your taskbar. So if I go here and right-click here, I can actually see the service with all the uh, additional features I can actually activate and deactivate. Now, of course, somehow we now have to set up the connection for Pixera so that the software solutions can actually talk to another. And what you will have to do is you will have to go to your settings. And in here you find your API settings. So I'm using here right now the beta version because there are quite some cool changes in here which I uh, definitely want to show to you. So what's new here, for example, is you can now finally uh, select the network adapter you want to use for your API. So I have all the available network adapters here uh, and I can now choose which one I want to actually use. So that's my loopback, that's okay for now. That's all I want to do. And um, next step I want to, uh, or I have to do is I actually have to open now an API access port for AVO so that the two softwares can actually talk to another and send uh, data. So if you um, drop down the box here, you can actually find Pixera to AVO. And uh, now the next thing you want to define is a port. So standard port for, for this one would be 1400. And uh, what you have to do now is you have to restart Pixera because whenever you actually do something here, you want to restart the software. So I just simply hit restart. 
What's really important here is that your uh, firewall does not block any communication going in or coming out of Pixera as well as AVO. That's literally the fundamental thing you have to set up because otherwise it won't work. Okay, so now that we have the API set up, uh, we should be able to actually get communication going between AVO and Pixera. And uh, let's first start and open up the AVO 2D manager. So this is the node-based uh, programming interface. Um, and in here, basically, you will be able to, or you should now be able to see Pixera and it should be visible in here as a node, as you can see. And um, the whole implementation works in a way that whenever you add something in Pixera into your project, it will be visible in uh, AVO right away. So in here, what you can do now is you can expand it and there are some Pixera controls you can actually uh, trigger, like you can actually even close and save the project or just save it. Um, there is uh, some options for screens. Um, and what we are going to need now for now are timeline options. So what I can do is I can now take this timeline and drag and drop it onto here. And now I only got my timeline here. And <clears throat> as I only get one timeline for now, I only see one timeline. If I was to add a second timeline, let's quickly do this. Uh, as you can see, it will be added right away. So there's nothing you have to actually set up in Pixera. It will transmit all the data automatically. So now for our first timeline, I can already execute play, pause and stop. So I can just click on here and put one into this field and by doing so trigger that. As I have already added a layer, uh, so this is ch standard generic screen with um, a layer. I actually already see my layers. So let me quickly expand that so we get a little bit more to see. So let's make this a little bit smaller. So as you can see, I've got my layer here and on my layer, I can already, um, yeah, control some of the parameters. I can change the opacity as well as X, Y, and Z position. Let me quickly dive into here. So this icon is now over here, the change in the beta. Um, so we actually see the bigger range moving. As you can see now, I can go from X and Y as well as Z. I can also right click on here, edit, and then put the value in by hand. Or double click, which will also do the job. So zero and edit zero. There we go, to bring it back in. So as you can see, um, there's already quite some stuff I can actually do. Now, when it comes to AVU, there are some uh, features I can actually use without uh, possessing a license. If we again go to our, or if we start and take a look at our AVU service, which you can find in the taskbar, if you right click on here, you can actually open the menu. And on here, uh, there is a licensing tab. And if you actually look at that, so I also only got the free versions, a version installed here. So there's no additional function groups I can use. I could activate the license. And if I then have a license in functional groups, I can actually activate and deactivate additional features. So for what you get for free is one driver. So you could theoretically uh, uh, control one projector custom script um, for advanced logic and touch project. There is also Lynx touch in the system, which you can use in order to create touch interfaces in order to control Pixara or any other system basically. And one page is for free. If you want to try it out again, the PDF, the AVU script, which is uploaded on our Facebook group, you can browse through that and you should find all the features or all the functionalities explained in there so you can try it out. Now, there are also some features which are actually free. And if you go to settings, you can find most of them. There is shut and control restarts, as well as mouse position, mouse button, and also wake on LAN. So those are all features. All the features you can see here are basically free. And that's all stuff you can actually uh, use with Pixera. Also the demo node, which is basically a demo touch interface, uh, control interface uh, for you to use right out of the box. 
Now let's take a quick look at uh, Wake on Lamb because I think that's something that could be really useful to a lot of people. Um, if we now again go onto our service, we can open the Wake on Lamb window, which looks something like this. And then here I've got an example. I've got my Pixera director with uh, a MAC address and I can now add this to my system. Now it's already, it has already been added. And now if we go and take a look again at our AView manager, we will find all the additional activated features we have just activated in the settings. So um, this is now the service of my PC. If you put your mouse over it and just hover over it, you see information on that. So see the IP address, port, etc. And if I now expand this, I've got my PC control as well as Wake on LAN. So that's now my Pixera director. And if I wanted to now wake on LAN this, this PC from another system, from another AV system over the network, all I would have to do is cl just click one here. It would send the um, wake on LAN command over the network and then um, wake up the system. Um, additionally to that, we now also got uh, mouse control in here. Let's again also drag this in. As you can see, you get feedback on my mouse, left mouse, uh, left and right, and also last action. That's all stuff I can use for further programming, interactive installations, for example. You have a touch table, and for most touch tables, the touch is indirectly the mouse. Basically, if you touch a certain part of the screen, you trigger something. Lots of possibilities in here. And um, the next thing I want to show you now, um, as I want to combine this now with Pixera, is the so-called demo node. And the demo node is again something that you can use for free in order to try out uh, touch applications. All you have to do is activate it here. That's the same also for Wake Online. You want to enable it here. And then click left on it, and now we get our demo node. And uh, now this box is also visible in here. So now I've got my demo node in here and I can drag and drop it onto my workspace. And now as you can see, I've got buttons I can use, I've got sliders and I've got a text box, which you can use. As well as LEDs in order to get feedback. So um, I will now show you a really imp easy implementation on how I could connect something like this and now control Pixero with this. So all you have to do is drag and drop. So from this side, so there's always our out points. Blue is always out, yellow is in. So I take this out point and put it into my input point. Now there are different uh, connection types. We are only going through direct and scaled in this video. So I will use direct for this one. Let's also put in a pause and stop. And now let's take a look at if, if this works already. Now I hit play, works. Pause works as well as stop also works. There we go. Now let's do some more. Um, let's add some cues on here. So I will now put my locator here, add a play cue, another play cue, and another play cue. And let's also assign labels to them. So that's Q1, uh, Q2, as well as Q3. And um, the awesome part here is now these will be um, visible here in Pixera right away. So um, let's uh, structure it a little bit better to uh, have a better overview. So let's make this a little bit smaller because I actually only want to use is playing afterwards additionally. And now as you can see, um, the cues are already listed here in my node system. So I can now take them and put them on here. And for the queues, I've got two different options. Q, the first one is execute queue. So this will trigger the queue. Let's take a look at that. So you can see, now it jumps here, as well as to the one. And the second one is a feedback again that the queue was executed. That's again something you can further uh, uh, add to different uh, media control software. So let's do Q1, Q2, and Q3. There we go. And now I'm able to actually also jump to these queues. So four is Q1, five is Q2, six is Q3. Uh, now there are two more things I want to show you. Um, first thing is um, the is playing command. So as you can see, I've got LEDs on here, which can actually show red for something's not working and green for something's playing, for example. And what I can do now is 
Um, I can access them down here, LED one, and I can take now my is playing and take the out point and put it into the input of the LED. Again, with a direct connection. And let's also do the same with is paused and is stopped. So the first LED now, as you can see, it's already on, will indicate the system is playing. Second one is paused, third one is stopped. Of course, if you create your own touch project, you could also put uh, names in there in order to also get some feedback on what the LED is meaning. It's just a demo note here uh, for you to try out stuff. Um, yeah, so you, so you get used to it. The last thing I want to show is the slider. So on our slider here, as you can see, if I use this, we get a value range from zero to 255. Now, um, our opacity, uh, let's take a look at that. So here I also get my layer. And for my layer, I have opacity, position, and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> my value is actually different. So let's again, to have a better overview, add another page. And I will now put this in here. So I will put my layer in here. And for my demo node, I only need my slider. So I put the sliders in here. So what I can do now is again with different value ranges in here, 0 to 100 and 0 to 255. So that's standard DMX. Um, however, um, AVU allows me to scale it really easy and really fast paced. All I have to do is just drag and drop it again here. And now instead of a direct connection, we're going to use a scaled connection. And uh, now let's take a look at that. With this button, I trigger play. And as you can see now, let's take a look here. I can now use the slider because the values are being scaled immediately without any, without the need of any additional mathematical operations because um, AVU can just handle this for me right out of the box.